actual shooting uh, function. So let's go in and do void shoot. And uh, we're going to open up the uh, curly brackets here. And inside of the shoot function, um, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff with ray casting. And uh, bear with me, uh, you might be a bit confused along the way with all of the calculations. And uh, there are some longer lines, um, but it's, it's actually not too difficult. And uh, it's something that you can't just memorize and then do. Uh, but I'll do my best to explain it uh, for you. So um, first off, let's just go ahead and check if, if everything is working. Let's not get our head ahead of ourselves. Let's just uh, make a test debug.log statement here to see if our fire rate is working. So when we hit play now, we should get a uh, debug.log saying test when we click and indeed we do. So you can see here that we are getting some test logs. Uh, let's go ahead and change the fire rate to five now and see uh, if we hold this down. Oops, let's bring it up here. We are getting uh, the t uh, five tests per second. Cool. So uh, let's go ahead and make that uh, zero again. And uh, now we can go ahead and put some actual code in here. So let's do uh, vector2 and let's call this mouse position. So here we're going to store our mouse position as a uh, uh, vector2 and we're going to set this equal to a new vector2 and uh, just make sure to open up some uh, parentheses and inside of these we're going to type camera dot main dot screen to world point and we are going to give it the input dot mouse position and then we're going to do dot x outside of the uh, uh, parentheses there oops we are missing a parentheses and then we're going to do comma and then we're going to do camera dot main dot screen whoops screen to world point and again input dot mouse position close it off and then do dot y so that's the whole line it's a long one but basically what we're doing is we're creating a new vector 2 called mouse, po mouse position and we are assigning it the uh, screen to world point of our mouse positions x and the screen to world point of our mouse position y. This way we will get, uh, we will translate the position of the mouse from screen coordinates into the position in the world and therefore we can actually use it to do a raycast. We wouldn't be able to do this with screen coordinates because they are very different from the system that we use in the actual world for the transform. So that's what we're doing there. Whoops. Let's bring it back up here. Okay. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go ahead and make another variable. And we're uh, again going to uh, make a vector2. And let's call this fire point position. We're going to set this to be equal to a new vector2. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to say fire point dot position dot x comma fire point dot position dot y. So here we're simply taking the uh, fire point, uh, which is uh, the point on our, 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 the tip of our gun here. And uh, we're uh, storing that position as a vector2. Then next up, we're going to go ahead and uh, actually make the raycast. So we're going to say raycast hit 2D. And we're going to call it hit. And we're going to equal it to physics 2D dot raycast. So now we are casting out the ray. And uh, this is going to take some arguments. So let's do fire point position. 
is the first one. That's the beginning position. That's where we're going to cast the ray from, uh, which is our fire point position. And then we're going to give it a direction. So what you don't want to do here is just type mouse position because it's not from and to, it's from and direction. As you can see here, uh, the, uh, the static, uh, public static rake, rake, <coughs> raycast hit function called raycast takes two arguments. The first one is the origin and the second one is the direction. So how do we turn the mouse position uh, into a direction? Well, we do this by taking point A or point B and subtracting it with point A. So this is point A. So now we're going to take mouse position and subtract fire point position from that. And now we actually have the direction. And then we can do comma. And here we have the ability to either make a distance. So you can input a, f a float here to say how long out is the ray going to stretch if you want some weapons to only uh, hit inside a certain distance. We could go ahead and set this to something reasonable, maybe 100, or it's just going to continue uh, infinitely. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Um, so let's do 100. And then also we can give it a layer mask. So remember we created a layer mask up here with what not to hit? Well, we are simply going to input that here. So we're gonna, just going to say not to hit there. So uh, that was it for the actual ray casting. Uh, we are pretty much done with the hard part here. Now we can just go ahead and show it because none of this is visible. So for now, we're just going to be using debug.drawLine, which will not actually appear in game, but we're going to do a, a bit of trickery to make it appear while we're testing. So now we can go ahead and do debug.drawLine. And this is super useful. Uh, and then we're going to give it the starting point. Unlike the uh, the raycast, this just takes a start and an end, not a origin and a direction. So we are just going to give it the starting point, which is our fire point position. And then we're gonna, we are going to give it, um, uh, we, we could just put our mouse position here. But instead, let's just make it stretch out infinitely so we can really get a sense of of uh, the direction. I mean, you could just go ahead and do this and now hit back in game. And uh, we should see, oh yeah, we need to enable gizmos. This was the uh, triggery I was talking about. So up in the right hand corner, you need to select gizmos in order for this to work. And you can see now that when I click the mouse, it actually draws a ray out to the mouse point. And actually, while we are testing this, Let's go ahead and uh, make it just shoot all the time. So in the top of the update function, we're just going to type shoot. Uh, so we can really see the line here. Now it's just going to shoot all the time to my mouse. And you can see that this is actually working. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is I just want to uh, make sure that this just continues on infinitely. And to do this, uh, we take the direction, uh, we find the direction vector and we just multiply it with a value. So, uh, so we're going to say mouse position minus fire point position, just like up here. Now we get the direction vector, and then we can just multiply it by multiply it by let's say a hundred to just make it go on really long. You could do two hundred or whatever. So now when we hit play, we are simply multiplying the direction to make the line continue on. So there's a bit of a delay, but that's not to worry about yet. Cool. Uh, and uh, what we can also do is we can give it a pretty color. So <laughs> we can do a comma and then say, uh, let's do color dot uh, sign. It's a pretty one. And uh, then we can go ahead and actually check uh, if we hit something. So we can say if hit dot collider is not equal to null, 
then let's open up some brackets. So if we actually hit something, uh, then we can do another debug.draw line that we're just going to put on top of the other one, we're gonna, but we're going to make this one red and only extend onto what we hit. So that's going to make uh, sense in a second. So we're just going to put this between the fire point position and the hit dot point. And we're going to make this red. Uh, so this is actually going to show us uh, what it's hitting. So when we hit something over here, you can see, whoops, no, it's not. Something is not working here. Uh, let's see if hit that collider is not equal to null, which it shouldn't be because it was just hitting something. Fire point position, hit that point, color red. Hmm. This should be working. Is this even being called? So let's do a debug.log test. Is this being called? Hit play. Oops. We have an error. A passing error. Uh, what is going on here? We are not. Oh. Oh, I missed. I see. I missed a, uh, a curly bracket up here. Stupid. Okay, so we can go ahead and delete the debug log again there. You were probably shaking your head all along. Okay, so now you can see that once we hit this, it's still not working. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here and uh, see uh, if I can get this working and then I'll come back in a sec. Okay, so I'm back. So I figured out the problem and it was actually pretty elementary. So uh, what I, I did wrong here was I thought of the layer mask uh, the wrong way. Um, I remember that as being um, what you have selected will uh, is what the ray will not hit. Uh, but actually it's what you have selected is the only thing that the ray would, will hit. So let's just rename this to what to hit instead of what not to hit. And let's put it down there also. Save it and hit back uh, into Unity. And now under the what to hit, we're going to select everything and then we're going to exclude the player and the ignore ray cast. Sorry for lying there. And now we can go ahead and hit play. And you can see once we hit something that the part of the line that stretches from the hit point to uh, our, fire, um, our fire point is now red. Just to see where it hits and, and what it's doing behind the scenes. Cool. So uh, that was a bit on, on graphics and some useful ways of thinking of, of these lines and, and how you can extend them and directions and starting and ending points. Uh, and the last thing we can go ahead and do is, uh, of course, remove this shoot up here. So we're not constantly shooting. And then we can make a debug.log statement that will say what we hit and uh, how much damage we did. And then later when we add enemies, we can actually add that damage and make it do something. So let's do debug.log, and we're gonna say we hit, and then we're gonna do plus hit.collider.name, plus and did, plus damage, plus damage <laughs> like this so uh sounded weird but there it is uh that's gonna write out a pretty normal th sentence i think so if we hit play here and we uh let's say point towards the um platform four over here and, and click you can see that it says we hit platform four and did 10 damage and you can see that it also draws a ray and uh, we can, of course, go ahead and play around with the fire rate. If we bump this up, we can get lots of rays. Ooh, it's spamming. And yeah, so that's how you make um, shooting. And the cool thing about this here is that the weapon script we can put on pretty much any weapon that we are going to need so far. Uh, so we can just tweak the damage and the fire rate. And we have all kinds of weapons available to us already. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to drag down the pistol into the project pane to make out uh, to make a prefab out of it. And I'm just going to keep it on the player for now because shooting is always fun to see. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Thanks for watching. And of course, if you want to support Brackies or just 
generally be a bigger part of the Brackies community, uh, you should totally head over to the forum.brackies.com and uh, become a member. It's really easy. You can sign it up with both, uh, both uh, Twitter, Facebook, or just normal filling out some boxes and hitting join. And uh, there are lots of useful resources or uh, places to get answers here. Uh, you don't even have to, to make threads or be active or make an account. You can just sit here and, and read or find cool assets, which I've certainly done. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.